So again, all you 1-200 scale airplane collectors, which uh, means me, and that's it. <laughs> it's primarily about diecast cars, this channel. But anyways, I used to collect these 1-200 scale military planes, and I saw this thing, and it's uh, the third in a series that, uh, of videos I'm doing. This is by JC Wings, or JCW, although it makes no indication of that at all on the packaging, so it's totally unlicensed. I have to suspect Heiko is like a ground service equipment company because other boxes say like Lufthansa or a, a different airline of this, you know, casting, just different paint jobs, liveries, that is. Uh, so, this is a, a Goldhofer uh, tractor. Goldhopper is the brand that makes these types of tractors and it's uh, called an AST-1X. And uh, I looked up the specs on this thing. There's a couple different kinds of 1Xs. These are electric vehicles, uh, so they have 360 kilowatts up to 520 kilowatts of power. 520 kilowatts of power is around eight, around 700 horsepower to give you uh, an idea of how powerful these are. But these things don't go fast, you know. They're just meant to push airplanes around. So they only go around 30 kilometers an hour or 20 miles per hour. And uh, this thing can lift uh, 31 tons of dead dead weight or 600 tons of towing weight. So it's quite powerful, but just not very fast. Okay, so th these are nice boxes they, they give. Uh, they're not the same size as a uh, 164 scale car boxes. They seem to be a bit narrower from what I can see. In fact, actually... See, I have this Lambo, I compare it to the other tractor, so it's actually similar, it's just that the wall is thicker. You can see how th much thicker the walls are, so I guess you could stack them up, but uh, yeah, it's just a little bit different in the, the way it's done with these chamfered edges and stuff. Okay, let's put that aside for now, and then this bag of accessories. This is the first one I have that actually has a pair of tweezers. The other two I reviewed didn't have tweezers. So that's kind of nice. Uh, and then this is a die-cast metal tow hook. Which is interesting because... Oh, I see the front can actually accept a tow hook. But uh, as I saw in the box, it's actually called a tow barless tractor. So old tractors have bars that tow attached to the linkage of the uh, airplane and they tow with this bar. But a tow barless literally has these uh, hydraulic plates that wrap around the tires and after it wraps around the tires of an airplane, you might be able to see in this one, it actually lifts up the tire and so it basically becomes a rolling piece of pavement, this tractor. And that's how these, these types of tractors work. They literally lift up the front wheel of an airplane and then drag it around. Okay, well, as usual, though, this thing has uh, two safety cones as well, and then two tow bar hook pins, which I shall add later. If I don't lose them by the end of this review, that is. And then uh, this one is a different base plate compared to the other two I reviewed as well. The uh, These numbers are what kind of airframe it is supposed to stop at, you know, so it matches up the, the boarding gate. So different planes have different, you know, undercarriages and, you know, how far away they are relative to typical boarding gates. Okay, so I'll get that back on the base later. I like those bases enough. I'm making like miniature dioramas out of them. So this is a die-cast metal piece here. It's actually, for its size, quite heavy, being metal. And then I got these small photographs to compare to. Ah, oh, I see. This is the wrong photograph. This this is a more modern one, I think, because it has a canted, forward canted cabin. This, I think, is the older version where it matches this casting a little bit better. Okay. This rear view is a little bit different. This might be a more modern one as well. Can't really find too many photographs of uh, AST-1Xs that match this livery. Couldn't find any, actually. Yeah, 
the wheel cutouts are a little bit different on this one as well. Oh well, I did I did what I could, guys. Can't get everything. All right, let me get this ruler out of the way. Let me get a dental pick, and we shall see what's happening here. So that front axle is rolling. Actually, both of these axles roll. Uh, it's interesting that they would have rolling models. Something is so small. I don't find it realistic, to be honest with you, because tires flat out. But anyways, the side of this thing is printed nicely, and there, there are no decals. They're all tampo prints, I think. I don't see any of that waviness in between the, the the graphics, so I think it's all tampoed. It's very nice. Uh, unfortunately, this rear wheel, the blue is really off. Uh, oh, I see. What's going on? That's weird. So the axle itself has just a massive axle end, like Hot Wheels style. But as you saw, you know, the whole of this wheel is just messed up. Yeah, I don't think it's concentric. So that's really strange, a strange design. Okay. The front. And the front, though, I think the whole wheel is spinning. So... Yeah, that's just, that's strange that the front and rear wheels have two different axle systems. Very odd. Oh, I know why. Because of this. It's all hollow here. So... Yeah, that axle end is actually screwed into this casting. I see. What about this side? So I kind of feel like it would have been better if they didn't paint the blue on the plastic wheel itself because that's really helping throwing it off. If it was all black, it would be a little bit better. But it seems like the hole on this these wheels isn't really concentric. So anyways, I don't care. I don't want my models to roll because they'll just fall off things anyways. All right, so this side of the printing is nice as well. You can see Heiko there as well. Nice little vent details printed on, panel gaps and all that stuff. So going to the front here, you got this uh, big mesh guard here. And the reason why is this cabin on the real thing will raise up and down because it can actually be seen from the back view. When this rises up, the driver can turn around and see the mechanism grabbing the wheel of the airplane. You know, make sure it's grabbing the wheel properly. So I'm going to assume they don't want people's arms and legs getting stuck in here when this thing comes back down. So it's like a safety net. That's what I'm guessing. Pretty neat to, you know, this guy, there literally is a driver there. There's a steering wheel, the driver has arms and hands. So that's a great amount of detail. And you'll see this passenger seat is actually lower than the driver's seat. You can also see there's some sort of mirrors, but oddly I'm not sure why they're painted red. That seems weird. But they are, I, I don't know. I don't know if those are, yeah, they're photo -wish metal pieces. So, very fra fragile, I imagine. Same with this uh, mirror slash handrail. Although, I don't, it's painted very poorly. Like, it was really dirty before they painted it. This side, obviously, is a lot better. Okay, nice shot of the guy again. He's got like a face balaclava. balaclava. Anyways, top windows look good. You got a little orange safety light there. Printing again. And then a nice textured diamond plate kind of thing going on there. Yeah, this cabin doesn't go up and down, of course. It's a pretty small model, in case you haven't noticed by the size of my fingers. And then, uh, yeah, you know, a very basic mechanism for the the wheels here so essentially if you have a die cast airplane you're just going to rest the front tires in here and then you can you know drag it around okay so tail lights are printed on oh and then uh the tow hook interface here this is actually rubbery from the other yep the other two tractors are the same way and then the bottom is just plain, which is fine. Okay, so, very cool. Different from the other ones I have. Um, hmm. I'm not going to bother putting on this, this thing because this is a tow barless 
you know, tractor. So let's just uh, get an airplane out and see if I can rest the wheels inside of this thing. I don't have any commercial airplanes though, 1 200 scale. They're just, that's just way too big for my collection. In fact, what I'm going to show you is still too big for my collection. It's a uh, Soviet bomber. The tuple of. Uh, it's called the Bear. NATO calls this the Bear. Hold on. Yeah, so the, it's the TU 95 tuple of. Unfortunately, uh, Herpa, because this whole thing is cast metal, it's so big I can't even get into the shot. It's rear heavy, right? Uh, the landing gear, if you look here, you know, they're on the wings in the front, but all of this is metal back here, so it, it just always wants to do that. I even uh, put some lead putty in the front of this, but it just melted out, so I don't know. I kind of, it's just poorly designed. These are actually plastic, these horizontals, but this vertical wing is metal. Ideally, they would have maybe gutted out the bottom and had a plastic panel in the bottom. Boy, this is going to be kind of hard to do if it doesn't actually want to hang on its nose. Anyway, <laughs> well, alright, so that's what's supposed to happen, right? In the real world, these things would be open, it would back up, go around the tires, and then it would close around the tires and lift it up off the ground, and then the tractor would pull, pull this thing around as the tow bar list tractor. Okay, well, anyways, nice model, just a little bit too rear end heavy, which is kind of a shame. Alright, so let me get this thing out of the way. It's really big. If I drop it, it's going to break. I wish it was made out of plastic. Heavy models break. In fact, uh, let me just show you another one I thought about using this tractor with, but I can't. This is also by Herpa. This is a B-52 Stratofortress. And this thing, it's, it's all die cast metal again, so very heavy. And you'll see here, this engine over here, this broke off during shipping, you know. It came in a big blister pack in a box. But the weight of this thing, actually the engine is plastic. It just broke this off, it broke this off, I had to glue it together, I couldn't even find that piece of plastic, it's gone. So, this is why I don't like heavy models. Uh, a, it costs more to ship them, but B, heavy things break easier. There's so much inertia during shipping. Alright, random subject. Anyways, for you airplane fans, I have a 1-400 scale model. It's going to be twice as small as this in every dimension. And when that comes in the mail, I'll compare the two. But this one is made by Herpa, and uh, the one to come is made by Gemini. Okay, back to this little tractor here. Let's, uh... I guess I can compare it to some other tractors. Let me get this set up here. Alright, well I got spinning on this little base and I added some other tractors and showed the other ones from the JC uh, Wings collection here. So these other two are Komatsus. This is a WT-250. Uh, this is a WT-500, meaning 25 tons, 50 tons, and then this is like 30 tons of, uh, you know, lifting capacity, I guess what you'd call it. The uh, small green ones are made by Gulliver, and then these other ones are by TSM model. So, yeah. Uh, before it just had these loose in a glass cabinet, but I kind of like these bases that JCW did. And uh, I apologize for the fast speed of this, but there is no adjustment on this uh, turntable. So, but anyways, I, I, I like these uh, printed on graphics, so they are now miniature dioramas of my tractors. Let's uh, get these guys out of here and let this thing spin on its own. Oh, well, you know what? That's weird. 
It seems like it's spinning slower than it was before. Strange. There's only a left and right. There's no speed setting. Okay. Well, I gotta say, it's still... I'm really happy I got this one. Um, these things aren't cheap, but they do have a lot of detail. They have printed graphics everywhere. There literally is a driver, and then you have those photo etched rails and mirrors going on. So I think when you throw it, factor all that in, it seems to be an okay value. I don't know. Uh, I guess no hobby is really a good value. I guess it's all relative, right? So, anyways, I think that's it for my uh, tractors series these days. Uh, unless some other new brand comes out with some nice ones. I have seen some really expensive 1-200 scale uh, tractors. But they're like $100 a piece. And seeing I don't even have a 1-200 scale commercial airplane, I'm probably going to skip on those. Okay, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you around. Bye.